Let's see what we got, Flynn. It's clothes, which I'm sure you're not interested in. So I'll open those after I open this bigger package, which Flynn is interested in. Flynn found a new type of bug today called a nymph. No, oh, no, it's not? I called it a crawling bug. Oh, you call it a crawling bug? Okay, it's a crawling bug. Wait. Oh. What is it? I don't remember ordering this. What the, what the heck? I literally don't know, I don't know what that is or why we have that, but I don't know where that came from. Well, I wanted to show you guys some of the cute clothes, but these babies just want me to play with them. So I can't show you the cute clothes yet. They're in a pile over there. But uh, the babies want to play. Do you want to play? Do you want to play? Do you want to blanky? <laughs> you guys are so cute. You're so cute. Let me see that too. Let me see that tooth. You got a new tooth? You got a new tooth in there? You guys see it? I don't know if I said this yet in the vlog. Wesley got his first tooth, which is so exciting. He got the one on the left, and this one's coming in right now, so he's a little grumpy. So exciting, you got your first toothies. You got your first little toothie over there. You guys see it? I think Maisie's starting to teeth too because she's been sucking on toys like crazy. So I put them in their little standy things for a second so I can look at these clothes. Flynn is taking swim lessons right now, which is very exciting. But I saw these online and I got very excited because Flynn had a romper like this when he was a baby and I loved it. My mom got it for him because my mom loves chickens. And so I found the same one that Flynn had. Flynn had a little one like this that was chickens. So I got one for Wesley. What do you think? Do we like? Do you like it? Do you like it? You do? You like the chickens? You like the chickens? I think he likes the chickens. Maisie, <laughs> suck it on everything. I think she's teething. So I'm gonna have to get Maisie some new teething toys. Maisie likes different types of toys than Wes does, which is interesting. Do you want to see another one? Got another one, another chicken one, so you guys can be matching. My mom's gonna be very excited about that. My mom's gonna watch the babies for some of the time while we are in, while I'm in New York, just for a little bit of the time. So she's gonna be excited about this, and this one she's gonna really like because it has a ruffles and a ruffly butt. You like that one, Wesley? You like the ruffle butt? You do? Okay, there's that. This one I got because Maisie has a really cute romper that is like succulents and it has frills on it and it's really cute. And I got it at the store and they only had one, but I got it for Wesley without the ruffle butt. I mean, he can wear a ruffle butt if he wants, but this one doesn't. It's got succulents and plants. I think that second tooth is coming in and it's hurting him. The first tooth came in two days ago, really just popped through, I can't believe it. And here, little ducks. Aren't these cute, little duckies? Do you like the duckies? So obviously I got two of those. I know it seems like I buy a lot of clothes for my babies and that's because I buy a lot of clothes for my babies. But they go through like four outfits a day because they're constantly puking on them, pooping on them, and I have two of them. So it's constant outfit changes all day long. This is little butterflies. Flynn just got caterpillars that are turning into butterflies so I thought it'd be cute for them to have little butterfly onesies. That's so cute. I got a matching one for Wesley. I gotta hurry, they're getting over their standard things. Nothing lasts longer than a couple minutes with these babies. So here's the Wesley one. <laughs> Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. I gotta get them out. Okay, so they got to get the standy uppy thing. I think they're hungry. Are you hungry? I'm gonna give them some food and then I'll talk to you guys later. Okay guys, I ordered a coffee from this new place. I'm always on the lookout for a good latte these days. And so I'm trying it. I've never tried this place before. Not good at all. And you know why it's not good? I ordered this an hour and a half ago and I kept getting notifications. We're dropping off another order on the way. We're dropping off another order on the way. Sorry, you're delayed, you're delayed, you're delayed. It got delayed an hour, my coffee. So all the ice in it just melted and now it's basically just water. But the reason I wanted to try this place is because I like trying random like coffee shops. This place has a lavender latte and I thought that sounded very interesting and I wanted to try it. I don't think it will be good. I love the smell of lavender if I'm like in a day spa, but other than that, lavender's not my jam. The flower's pretty, but there's always too many bees on it. The smell just reminds me of like a bathroom and I don't wanna eat it. I don't know why people make so many like lavender flavored things. It was like their number one top latte there. So I was like, okay, I've gotta try it. I don't smell lavender, but. Who wants to drink a dish soap? It tastes like dish soap. Can you try it? that in my mouth. Tell me that doesn't taste like a cleaner. It tastes like a, a bath salt. You like it? Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. I like the like artificial like bath cleaners though. I like it. If like it things that are flavored coconut, I like it because it tastes like sunscreen. 
Okay. <laughs> I don't like eating sunscreen though. Or candles. I do. I know you do. He always like a candled flavored coffee. I also got their cold brew for That's, Eric. But, it's good. It's but he's not here, so I'm gonna try it. It kind of has a chocolatey flavor. It's good, it's very strong. My little like moment of this was because I saw a bug. Anyway, I'm gonna take my coffee and do a little bit of work. That's all she wrote. Hello everybody. I know I didn't vlog at all today, sorry about that. It's a crazy hectic day. There's a lot going on in the news that's really sad and I'm just busy. My hair's very greasy. <laughs> anyway, hi everyone. I'm gonna answer a couple of tortilla quack, 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 quack. I am malfunctioning. Tortilla talk questions. There was just a couple that I liked that I wanted to answer or talk about. So Jessica said, Tritty Talk question, is it interesting to notice in what ways of your kids are similar to you and or Eric? I've always found it so cool to analyze how my personality and mannerisms match or differ from my parents. I see a lot of you in all three kiddos and a whole lot of Eric and Flynn especially love you. It is kind of interesting to watch their personalities grow and see little bits of me or Eric or other family members in the kids. Obviously way more Flynn than the twins because the twins are still so little. It's fun for me because because the kids look nothing like me. Obviously, they look just like Eric. So for me, it's fun to see little personality traits that resemble me a little bit because they don't look like me. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, there's something about them that's kind of like me. So for Flynn, I think Flynn's facial expressions are like mine. So even though he literally has Eric's face, um, sometimes he makes facial expressions that I'm like, oh my God, he looks exactly like me when he makes that face. So that's cute. I think Maisie, even though she's a baby, is a lot like me. She looks like a Stockland, she looks like Eric, she looks like Flynn, but her personality so far, it reminds me so much of me. She is extreme, her emotions are extreme, so if she's upset, she's very upset and needs to cry and let you know how upset she is and has a really hard time. But then when she's happy, she's like the happiest baby you've ever seen in your life. When Maisie smiles, she smiles with her whole body. And when she cries, she's furious. So she's really intense and she's like night and day. Like she can be like sobbing her brains out, like screaming, like you're like, oh my God, what's wrong? And then all of a sudden she's like, <laughs> and like laugh. That's like me in the sense that like, I feel like I have very extreme emotions. Like, yes, I guess I'm dramatic. I'm classified as a dramatic person, but like, I don't think of it as dramatic because it's me and it's my emotions. And I know that the emotions and the feelings are very real. So when I feel devastated, I genuinely feel so devastated. And when I'm really happy and excited, I'm like, I feel like I'm gonna explode excited. That's very similar to me. Wesley is super chill and really calm, which is nothing like me. It's more like Eric, I guess, like just kind of a ch calm, chill, like vibe to him. Flynn, is very sensitive. The sensitivity and he's pretty dramatic. Dramatic could be me or Eric. <laughs> and the sensitive, I think maybe is more Eric. Flynn lo only can enjoy something if he sees someone he loves enjoying it too. So like if he finds a bug, he'll get excited, but he's only super happy and excited if he gets to show it to me or Eric or Corey and see our joy. You do know what I'm saying? Like he can only fully enjoy something if he watches someone else enjoy it with him, if that makes sense. And I love that about him. And I don't know if that's just like a human being thing, like if all humans are like that, but I know I am definitely like that. Like when I enjoy something, I need my whole family to enjoy it too. Like that's why I love taking my family on tour with me because I love touring. I love being on stage. I love performing. And I want them all to do it with me all the time because they're my favorite people in the world. And I want them with me to enjoy my favorite things. Flynn's very much like that. I mean, the babies are too young to like really have too, too big of a personality that I can really gauge. But like so far, I think Maisie's a lot like me. And also something else that's little, like it's small about Maisie but like I relate to hardcore because Maisie is like weird about textures. She is not even six months old and literally since the NICU she's like if she doesn't like the way something feels she will not touch you. She's like ugh. Clothes like certain clothes I put on her if she doesn't like the feeling of them like if they're not super soft super cozy stretchy comfortable clothes she'll cry like constantly until you change her. She'll hold my finger sometimes but she's not big into like finger holding and I thought she just hated holding any toy like I was like oh Maisie hates holding toys. Wesley loves toys, Maisie hates toys. But I recently got them little spoons because we're gonna start feeding them soon, like solids. And so I wanted to get them like little training spoons like to practice with. So I hand them the spoons every day to like practice holding a spoon and enjoying the feeling in their mouth of a spoon so they can get used to it before I put food on it. And um, she loves her training spoon. She like loves the feeling of it, she holds it, she chews on it, she loves it. She'll hold on to it for so long. And I'm like, oh, she just didn't like the texture of all the other baby toys I have because they'll have ridges and things on them. And she loves the feeling of blankies. And so she'll like, play and feel blankies, but she won't touch certain materials. That's really interesting to see that she already has like an aversion to certain textures and the feeling of them at such a young age. But I am like that big time. There are certain fabrics and things that if I touch them, I'm like, 
I get like the shudders, like the shivers. So I totally get that. But yeah, they have, they all have really big personalities and I'm so excited to watch them grow and learn and change and evolve into the little humans they're going to become. I love them all so much. Okay, so this isn't a tortilla talk question. It's just a comment that I saw a lot on my vlog yesterday. So yesterday I posted about like how I went to the park with Flynn and I had kind of like a really uncomfortable, scary, gross experience at the park. If you want to watch it, you can. I'm not going to go into it again. But basically a stranger came up to me and he made me very uncomfortable. And I, I talked about how I was like, you know, he was kind of saying, gross things to me and I said thank you you know and then it kind of turned my back to him and I saw a lot of comments similar to this so I wanted to talk about it this is from Tanner the best advice I ever got is you don't owe a stranger politeness when they are making you uncomfortable it was hard for me to learn at first because I'm a people pleaser but my safety is worth more than someone's feelings I'm so sorry that happened to you that's scary the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I want advice now this is something I'm gonna bring up with my therapist and I've brought this up with my therapist in the past you know about how like you could literally stomp on my face and punch me in the boob and tell me you're you're gonna hurt my whole family and somehow I would still be like I'm so sorry I love you what can I do to help you I'm sorry like I will always just like apologize and just make sure everyone's okay and like I just like I panic in those situations even if the other person is like doing something awful like what this guy did at the park I still was just like thank you and I was like nice and that was the biggest thing I was beating myself up over yesterday when I got home was that I kept saying to myself like why didn't I tell him to go away why didn't I say you're making me uncomfortable please Please leave me alone. Why didn't I say get out of here? There are children here. Stop it. Why didn't I say F off and call the cops right away? Like why didn't I do it? Why was my instinct like I don't want to make this person who's making me very uncomfortable and being extremely inappropriate and doing an illegal thing. Like why was my initial reaction to protect that person's feelings? Because that is what I was doing. I, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I didn't want to make him feel bad. So I just said thank you. Bye. And like turned my back to him. I'm really upset with myself about that. And I beat myself up about that all day yesterday that I didn't didn't do more to protect myself, the children around. I mean, granted, you know, my son and the kids, as far as I know, no one saw anything and like no one was harmed or whatever and everyone's okay. But like, I'm angry at myself that I didn't do more to stop that situation. Does that make sense? Like, I feel really upset about that with myself. And this is something that I always have struggled with. I don't like confrontation. I don't like problems. I don't like upsetting people. I don't like that. And so I will do whatever I can to avoid hurting someone's feelings or, you know, uh, anyway, I'm curious curious if anyone else, obviously other people feel like that because that comment said I used to do this and this was good advice that I got. How do I stop doing that? <laughs> it's hard because it's a part of myself that I like like. I like that I care about other people's feelings that I don't want to hurt other people's feelings and that's something that I want to pass on to my kids and teach them but at the same time I want to be able to stand up for myself and create a safe environment and you know create boundaries so that me or my loved ones don't get hurt um, by certain people or situations so I'm curious and obviously my therapist I'm sure will have great advice but like if you guys have any firsthand like advice on how to like overcome that because it's something I've done my whole life and it's gotten me in a lot of bad situations and so I'm just curious if anyone has advice on that on like how to obviously care about everyone's feelings and try my hardest to make sure everyone is okay and love everyone but at the same time like set boundaries in situations where it's uncomfortable or could turn bad where I need to stick up for myself you know stuff like that like I can't, I guess there's no line for me so it's just all you know what I'm saying I don't know I feel like I'm not making any sense but if you have advice for me that would be lovely because I'd love to read your comments you guys always have such lovely wonderful comments but anyway I'm gonna go I love you guys I had a pump I go to bed so maybe I'll see you tomorrow maybe not I don't know oh Joey's coming over tomorrow to meet the twins I'm so excited I get to see Joey okay that's all okay bye you can relax Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.